Welcome to your first video. Let's go over some quick steps on how to be successful whenever you take notes. In order to be successful, follow these four steps. Step one, if there is text on the screen, you need to write it. When there's a diagram or picture on the screen, you need to draw it. If you get behind, just pause it or rewind it. But remember to do a great job because not only will this be a grade, but the most important things is that these notes will be what you use to study for your quiz, quizzes and your tests. So let's start out with a quick review. Remember that the sun heats the earth, but it doesn't do it evenly. So take a look at this picture and draw it. So the angles are different depending on where you are on the earth. So if you're at the poles, you have a more indirect angle, pardon my awesome writing. And if you're right there at the equator, you have a direct angle. It's because of this uneven heating that we get convection currents. So remember, this is how a convection current works. As the air heats up, the molecules in the air spread apart, which causes the air to be less dense. Therefore, we end up with hot air that's rising. But as that air circulates and starts to get cooler, those molecules are going to get closer together, which causes the air to be more dense. Therefore, it sinks. So think about density and why a rock sinks and a piece of wood's going to float. And this is why we get currents. So if the air is more dense, it's going to have more pressure. So cold air is more dense, so it's under more pressure. Less dense means there's less pressure. So warmer air is less dense, so it's under less pressure. So if it's at the poles, it's going to be under more pressure. And if it's at the equator, it's going to be under less pressure. So here's my more sign and here's my less than sign. And it's the changes in this pressure that actually causes our wind. So the important thing you need to know about wind is that it always moves from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. So if you need to think about a balloon, you blow up a balloon. If you let it go, that air, which is in the balloon, which is under a lot of pressure, it's high pressure, wants to come out of it to get into the open spot where there's lower pressure. So water and air move in specific ways depending on the hemisphere that you live in. If you live in the northern hemisphere, everything's going to move to the right or clockwise. If you live in the southern hemisphere, everything's going to move to the left or counterclockwise. And this is what's known as the Coriolis effect. What I want you to think about is the toilet. So if you've ever heard, if you live in the northern hemisphere, you flush the toilet, look at the water, it's going to move clockwise. If you ever go to the southern hemisphere and you flush the toilet, look at the water, it's going to go counterclockwise, and that's pretty neat. So there's different types of wind. You've got local winds, which create uh, are created by convection currents that happen in these small local areas, and this wind blows over a smaller area, closer to the Earth's surface, which is what's being shown in this video or sorry, not the video, in this picture. Global winds are caused by larger convection currents of the globe, and these winds blow across the whole Earth. Mind that awesome spelling mistake. And remember, pause this, guys, draw these pictures. These are great pictures to have, and I'll be looking for it. So here's our last slide. Let's talk, talk really quickly about ocean currents. So there's streams of water in the ocean, and they move in these regular patterns that are shown in this picture. Ocean currents act very similar to the air currents, which is what we've been talking about, convection currents in the air. This is just convection currents in the water. And this heat is going to be carried by the currents. Now we have two different currents. We have the red currents, which are warm currents that start in that tropic zone around the equator where the sun's hitting it at a direct angle, so it's getting more heat. Then we have our cold currents, which are our blue ones here, that start in the polar zones where the sun's hit it at an indirect angle, so they're cooler. They don't get as much heat. And just know that the Gulf Stream is the most popular, again, little bitty mistake, is the most popular warm current, and it makes Europe have mild weather instead of freezing weather. So remember with this video, guys, stop it, pause it, rewind it, do whatever you need to do. Make sure that you have all of this down, and I hope you enjoyed this awesome video.